All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. Today, we're going to talk about a nasal spray that was uh, requested yesterday by Cool Beans, Trevor, Susan Pick, and then France reminded me of that as well. This nasal spray, at least from their from the synopsis on the on their website, it reduces the replication or it reduces the SARS-CoV-2 within 72 hours by 99.99%. So almost eliminates it. So the question is, how do we use it? What data do they have to show for it? Or what do they have to tell us about it? And what is the mechanism of action for this? So let us start our discussion. Today, what we'll do is, in addition to this, there are a couple of announcements as well, which I think you would like. Number one, tomorrow we'll have Dr. Stephen Phillips with us. He is the author of the book, Chronic. So if you have any follow up questions after you have read the book Chronic and you want it to be uh, you are curious about Lyme disease or other chronic, chronic diseases, chronic infective diseases, we will have him with us tomorrow and you can ask your questions. So that is one. Secondly, I had requested uh, FLCCC.net, uh, Dr. Paul Merrick and Dr. Uh, Corey's team that it is difficult for cool beans to find the doctors who prescribe ivermectin. And so what they did was that is very kind of them for after my request yesterday, they sent me a note or their team sent me a note that they have put the list of doctors on the main page. So if you go to flccc.net over here, just below the donate to support our mission, there is a button that says how to get ivermectin and if you go there, there is the list over here. So I was kind of complaining to them that this list should be in your face so people can easily reach it and find doctors who are prescribing it. So that is another important thing that I wanted to discuss with you. And then finally, uh, there is one more quick news. And that is uh, I made a mistake yesterday in the verse report and the anaphylaxis and the deaths I, I I think I had selected all data both times, so they looked the same. So what I'll do is this. And secondly, there was some questions from Cool Beans that they still did not see how to actually navigate that system. So after this talk, we'll do another five minutes talk about specifically using CDC's verse um, um, system to see the vaccine side effects or the side effects that are being reported. And after that, we'll do chat chat if you are comfortable. So let's start our discussion about this nasal spray. So here, this nasal spray is by a company in British Columbia, Vancouver, Canada. The, the spray's name is Sanitize. I have no association of any kind with them. Uh, this was Cool Beans who brought it up yesterday. And because this is going to become a CME and CE lecture as well, I have no disclaimers to offer. So here is what basic idea of this spray is. They are saying that as soon as you feel you are exposed to someone who may have COVID, or let's say you're outside and somebody coughed or somebody sneezed, or you felt that, hey, I may be in an, in an environment where, for example, a doctor's clinic, where there may be COVID, then if you immediately take this spray, this spray can actually reduce the viral's infectivity and reduce then the viral's, virus's replication. And not only just for the COVID, but for other viruses as well, including flu. So this is something that they feel that you should have it with you all the time. So with this background, let's look at what they have in terms of data. And then we look at the mechanism of action of this nasal spray. It is actually a very interesting mechanism of action. I made a painting for you for that to display that mechanism of action. So let's look at their site. This is their site, Sanotize, and their uh, solution that they use in that nasal spray is called NORS and that is their trademark and this is the data over here data or their summary of what they have done there is no actual data available yet so i'm going to be walking you through this data and then here how does this nasal spray work or the solution the solution is primarily composed of nitric oxide so what is the function of nit nitric oxide 
for antiviral, that is the mechanism of action we'll see. So first we'll see the data, then we'll see the mechanism of action. And if you just wanted to watch this much, that is this nasal spray useful? Yes, their data shows that it is useful and within 72 hours reduces the SARS-CoV-2 by 99.99% in the in vitro studies. So let's start. There are some extra links that are present in the description as well for some of the concepts that I'm going to use here to explain this system. And of course, this is drbean.com. <laughs> so let's start. Here we are. So first of all, they say that we have done a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial of 79 COVID-19 confirmed patients. And what they did was they divided them into two arms, one to one. So I wrote 40 each because I do not know how to divide 79 into two equal. So I'm sure that one of these is 39 and one of these is 40, but I just said, fine, 40 each. And one arm, the placebo arm, was given saline, and the other arm, the treated arm, was given sanitized nasal spray. And here, and another interesting thing was that the patients were majority with the UK variant. I would love to see South African variant treated as well. So here is the result. Number one, within 24 hours of administering the nasal spray, they saw that 95% of the viral load in the nasal swab had gone. That is excellent. And then within 72 hours, 99.99% of the viral load had gone. That This is a similar reduction that we saw with ivermectin. So this nasal spray's behavior looked very similar to me as that of an ivermectin's behavior. And uh, wait for a few more minutes and I'm going to talk about its mechanism of action. Continuing on, then they also say that Health Canada had approved a phase two, which study for them. And so they did a multi-center randomized controlled which I would say placebo controlled. They use the word only controlled. So I also just took the word for safety and efficacy. Remember, this is phase two. Phase two is usually dose and safety and efficacy. And here is what they found. They gave this nasal spray plus some lavage plus some things to gargle. So that means nasal and pharyngeal, both areas were covered one by gargles and one by uh, nasal spray. What I do not know is that if the gargles were actually made up of the same solution or gargles were, for example, Listerine or something else. We just do not have that data yet. I intend to call them and see if their CEO or their some other team member can join us and we can talk about them about it. But this is the information so far that they had healthcare workers and some folks who are at high risk, for example, they may have comorbidities or they may have an advanced age. So for those folks, they had given this formula. And what the result they said is there were zero infections in the people who were using this formula. And I can understand they are now blocking the virus from entering into our system by giving a nasal spray and they're blocking it by giving gargles. So virus has to stay there and survive to be able to bind to cells and then infect them and replicate. So if you're already killing them, virus doesn't have a chance to kind of grow in numbers. So I understand the mechanism here. So zero infections and strong safety data. And I put a question mark here because the question is, what does strong safety data really mean? Number one. Number two, when this is zero infections in the treated arm, they do not tell what happened on the placebo arm. Maybe there were zero infections there as well. So if I go back to their site, and if, you, if I read it, check this out. Has completed a Health Canada approved approval multi-center, I hope that this is approved, multi-center randomized controlled, placebo controlled, hopefully. Uh, I'm putting my words in their mouth, which I should not, but controlled means what? Phase two safety and efficacy study, N equals 143, 
evaluating nitric oxide nasal spray in combination with the lavage and gargle for the prevention of COVID-19. And look at this, nobody from the treatment arm got infected and strong safety data was shown. Does this mean that nobody also from the placebo arm or did someone get infected? So that data is just missing, which is kind of weird for me. But still for 143 people, if it really worked and it had significant results compared to placebo, then it is good. If there is no significant difference, then this, this data means nothing. Continuing on. Then they requested University of Utah, their antiviral department, to conduct some studies for them to see if this solution, NORS solution, which is part of this nasal spray, can be effective against this virus. So what they did was in the university, they took many viruses, coronaviruses. So you know that we have SARS-CoV-2. And I, again, there is no data. So this is my conjecture here. This is my thinking here because they say we used coronaviruses. So if you see here, NORS is 99.9% .9 effective against different types of coronaviruses, including SARS-CoV-2. So I extrapolated that statement to say, well, that means they have SARS-CoV-2. They may have SARS-CoV-1, they may have MERS-CoV, and then they may have human coronaviruses that usually live in our throat most of the time. So I may be totally wrong here. So this is my uh, thinking that they took some coronaviruses. And if you see here, these human coronaviruses are kind of happy because they live with us and they, they don't bother us that much. Uh, ideally, the SARS-CoV-2 would turn into that kind of a virus as well. And the SARS-CoV-1 and MERS-CoV are feeling all embarrassed because they think that the SARS-CoV-2 did more damage than them, which we are happy about, but they're not. So then what we did was in the University of Utah, they put this solution, nitric oxide solution on these viruses and 99.9% .9 viruses died or became uh, non-viable. So if you see here, SARS-CoV-2 is out, SARS-CoV-1 is out, MERS-CoV is out, Human, some human coronaviruses are out as well. And 0.01% is scared there and kind of thinking, oh man, I'm going to be the next one. So that is their um, result for that. And finally, received an IND, in investigational new drug status, to allow a clinical trial in the US. So that is where they stand. This is the data. So from a data point of view, other than missing <laughs> important compar comparative numbers, for example, what happened in the placebo, for example, what was the p-value, how significant was these results? Uh, other than that data, without which this is not going to go anywhere, um, from a data point of view, whatever we have, it makes sense. And now let me explain. So switching gear to the next part of the discussion, and that is a mechanism of action. I am only going to talk about the antiviral part. If you look at their site, and here's the deal. We have actually talked about cysteine in the past. I'm going to talk about cysteine in a second. And then we have talked about nitric oxide as well in the past in the context of cytokine storms. So these discussion for the cool beans, we have done them before. So I'm just going to take higher levels. So if you see here, they are saying that the presence of nitric oxide is useful as an antibacterial in this spray, nasal spray, as an antiviral inside the cell. It is useful for fungus. Fungus, it is useful for inflammation. It is useful. We know that part for the inflammation. And then it increases blood flow. We know that part as well from our past that it kind of helps dilate the blood vessels and increases the blood flow. And then helps with the wound healing as well because of the reactive oxygen species and, and that mechanism. So in here, I am specifically only going to talk about antiviral. We have talked about others in the past. So let's see that. So this is the possible mechanism. And here is my little <laughs> painting for you, this one. So mechanism is this. Imagine a boat that is tied at the dock. If this boat has to be going out in the, in the river or ocean, it needs to be cut from this dock so that it can go cut or it has to be untied, correct? The boat is tied to the pier or to the dock. That is the basic concept. 
Here, what we are going to see is that the virus itself, if it needs to enter into our cell, so if we talk about SARS-CoV-2, we know it needs to bind with ACE2 to enter. Similarly, when it is getting out of our cell, it also needs to be separated from the cell to, to, to go out and go into the other cells and, and infect them. There are antivirals that would not let a virus get out. This is like if this boat, if this boat was a virus and this dock over here was a cell. And if you do not allow the, the virus to separate from the cell, then the virus will bud out. It will emerge from the cell, but cannot go anywhere because it would stay stuck with it. When I read this mechanism, this is the mechanism of neuraminidase inhibitors. So the uh, healthcare professionals here, the antivirals, there are is a group of antivirals that are called neuraminidase inhibitors, especially for flu viruses. And what they do is imagine if you get out of your home and when you hold the door to close it, then you cannot let go of the door. You're just tied to the door. And now you, you're out. You want to go, but you cannot go because your hand is stuck to the door. This is the, this is the mechanism that I'm going to explain. This mechanism is responsible for a difficulty to enter and a difficulty to exit. So let's look at that mechanism. I also, when I looked at this mechanism for this nitric oxide, I thought of this as well in some um, romantic movies, the boy and girl are in love and now they something bad happens and they are going to be separated and they're holding each other's hands and then they both are going in opposite direction and they're still not letting go of the hands and they're just grabbing onto the hands. That is the same thing that the virus in the cell. The virus has to separate from the cell to go and infect others. So let's see what, what happens. Now, just like this boat over here, imagine this is the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2. Nitric oxide, when we spray in our nose, will cause cysteine amino acid to become nitrosylated. What does that mean? So we know that amino acids are like small bricks with which we make these proteins and substances. Spike protein is made up of these bricks as well. And spike protein has many, many cysteine in them. And if you remember, we have done this discussion in the past in the context of N-acetylcysteine or NAC. If you look at the discussion, you would see that in NAC, I had given this example that the um, NAC or the cysteine can live in sulfur disulfide bonds like a zipper. So what happens is in proteins, some proteins need to be folded and then tied together in that folded state. So that folded state can be achieved by zipping up the protein in a bag-like format. And that zipping up or bonding like a zipper is done by cysteine. Here, the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 also uses cysteine amino acid to form its three-dimensional shape. And what happens is nitric oxide can combine with cysteine amino acid and disrupt its disulfide bond formation, which causes the spike protein to not be folded in the exact correct structure. That means my hand, if it was a spike protein, then when you put nitric oxide on it, my hand will become all jumbled up and squished and broken because the disulfide bonds of cysteine have become broken in the hand. So the hand would become totally useless. It cannot function correctly. So now imagine this is the spike protein. This was normal protein. This could bind with the ACE2. And here we have put nitric oxide on it. That caused the cysteine amino acid to become nitrosylated. And now the whole thing is just disrupted. Now, if we see what is the result of that, there are two results. So if you see here, this is our cell and this is SARS-CoV-2. 
see my my diagrams are becoming better and better so these are the gifts so the the virus has to enter the cell by binding to the ace2 enzyme but because we have put nitric oxide on the virus spike proteins and we have damaged i shouldn't say damaged we have kind of deshaped the spike proteins they cannot bind with ace2 anymore and because of that virus cannot enter the cell easily so can i say it reduces the infectivity of the virus so now imagine when the virus is present in the nose and it is trying to get into the cells and you do the spray the spray is going to go and damage the cell spike protein uh, the virus spike proteins and it is not going to be able to enter the cells and so the viral load would stay down and the infectivity will stay down so that is one and if you see here the virus is saying to our cell the cell is all scared and the virus is saying chill dude my cysteine is nitrosylated so now let's see what is the second part and we have rarely talked about this mechanism this mechanism is that when the virus has made its copies in our cells there are more viruses made in the cell these viruses now need to come out of the cell it's the same thing for the flu virus as well it is same for other viruses too sometimes the viruses destroy our cell on the way out they burst it open and sometimes viruses do not burst it open instead they decently get out and on the way out they take a piece of the membrane so you may have remembered once in the past i had taken a shawl like thing on myself and i kind of emerged from it so the, this is what happens here is a budding new virus this virus needs to come close to the cell's membrane our cell's membrane fuse with that cell membrane then emerge from it this is called virus budding when the virus is emerging this is like that boat connected to the dock eventually what has to happen is this virus and the dock have to separate from each other they have to they have to let go of each other for that over here the spike protein has to let go of our cell membrane and once again if we have damaged the spike protein it cannot easily function to let go as well and it just stays stuck to the cell membrane so there are going to be bunch of viruses that are just stuck on the surface of the cell membrane they cannot go anywhere they are emerging from the cell but they cannot separate from it and now their spread has reduced so both mechanism the mechanism of infectivity is reduced because virus cannot enter the cell easily the mechanism of virus budding from the cell and then going to other cell see here this bunch of cells who are all scared going to them to infect them is also not easy because the virus just keeps getting stuck on the surface and it is not cleaved away it is not broken away that is a mechanism so this is the uh, discussion from a mechanism point of view this looks a, like a beautiful thing from uh, this point of view that uh, it is a spray and we can use it when we need it that is also beautiful um, if we combine the spray with the gargle uh, awesome right so there is not even a tablet like ivermectin uh, so there is no vaccine so th there are bunch of benefits of this question is is it really provable that this would happen so whatever data they have so far i'm going to actually call them and see if they can show some data or they can come on our sh show and and share some more but combine this nasal spray with the gargles and i think this is a beautiful outcome so with this what i do not know is if it is available in the open market if it is my recommendation is to to use them and once again i have no association with them this was cool beans who brought it up yesterday i looked at it i did some uh, research looked at the medical mechanisms went to goodman gilman the pharmacology book looked at the mechanism there and then i presented it my only role here was to do this cartooning create a gift for you that's all so uh, when i'm saying that buy it use it it is not because i'm promoting the product it is really i think it is a useful product so with this 
I'm going to stop. So Susan, thank you very much. Susan Pick, Trevor, thank you very much. Franz, thank you very much. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to start again. And the next, so we'll do three talks today. The next talk, five minutes, how to use the uh, CDC's verse system. And then we'll close that one. And then we'll do chit chat as well. So thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, and share. There are three links in the description. One is for the Patreon. The other one is to buy me coffee. And then there is another link if you wanted to support this work. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in a second. Doug, this is a very important question, dosing frequency. And it is not on that yet. So I would just take whatever is on label dosing and we'll take that. They have not disclosed what is the dosing frequency in this context to reduce the SARS-CoV-2. I would suspect that maybe a couple of times a, a day. So once again, see you soon.